Heavenly Father, we lift up your daughter to you, Lord, Reverend Michelle, and Lord, we just pray for a fresh anointing upon her today, this morning, and Lord, we just ask you to bless her for her faithfulness, bless her for being here, leading the church in, in this message today, Lord, and we just pray that through this message, we will be drawn closer to your heart and to each other. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, Father, that I would decrease and you would increase. Father, I thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. God is taking us step by step in this season. He's always taking us step by step. He has taken us step by step in this season. We have been looking at the prophetic timeline. We have understood that perhaps according to the word of God, the generation that's alive now will be privy to the prophecies and the fulfillment of the prophecies that he has shared in his word that will occur before the return of Jesus Christ. Remember, there are two parts to the second coming. There's the rapture, when Christ returns. We do not know if it's going to be pre-trib, mid-trib, or post-trib because there are different theological positions. We can trust and hope it's pre-trib. Remember, we said we always have to be ready. And then there is his return with the church at the Battle of Armageddon. That's the second part of the second coming. I'm not going to go back there. I just need us to understand that the parable of the fig tree got our attention because I can't go back and preach it, but we need to know that the Jews returned to their homeland and in 1948 it was made official. And ever since then, that generation that was aware is most likely going to be once we continue to be alive on earth, because, I mean, there are people dying before the age of 40 or 50 or so. We're not wishing that on anyone. But we just need to know that it has nothing to do with, well, something took a thousand years, so maybe there's another thousand years. When you go back to what the word is saying, it's saying that we are going to be seeing a lot of fulfillment of prophecy. It does not say when Christ is returning, but it's enough for us to know that a lot of the turmoil in the world, we are going and have already started to see. Okay? So even if we tell ourselves, well, exactly what will be fulfilled that I may be here for. It really doesn't matter, y'all. What really matters is, can I stand? Because the world is already in turmoil. Can I stand if it gets and will continue? It will continue to get worse. Can I stand? Can me and my family stay holy and serve Jesus Christ in the midst of a place, of, of a planet that continues to persecute more and more the Christian? Because of the way the one world government that I am going to touch on today and the one world religion that has already started to make plans. Can we stand? That's all you need to bother about. You don't need to sit down and be like, well, I wonder if I'll be here with this prophecy and that. Listen to me. The road is already being paved and set for the one who is the Antichrist because he comes with a solution to the turmoil. So we already know turmoil has been taking place. We know and we're going to find out even more that many are going to be deceived. So what do you do? Be in your word now. Be in your word in the future. Be in your word because once you are in the word and you know the truth, you will not be influenced by nice sounding words. Fear will overtake many, but you will know not to be afraid because your faith, you would have been fed and you are standing firm on faith. 
So I want to encourage you today as we begin to look at this part of the journey. One world government and the Antichrist. You need to know why. Because even if we are not here for the Antichrist. The scripture says there are many Antichrists that have already come. And there are many who are deceiving the church of Jesus Christ. There are many Antichrist spirits out there. That many are starting to listen to. The world is going in a direction where Satan has started to put down his foundation. And you say, but how? Because God is allowing it. We're going to find out. And everything is in the word of God. So we are not taken by surprise. And if God says to us, you have a name that you're alive, but you're dead. Take those words to heart as well. God speaks to us through his word and his word does not lie. So I want to read to you. Genesis 11, 1 to 9. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as they migrated from the east, they came upon a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens and let us make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we shall be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower which mortals had built. And the Lord said, look, they are one people and they have all one language. And this is only the beginning of what they will do. Nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Come. Let us go down and confuse their language there so that they will not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth and they left off building the city. Therefore it was called Babel because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth and from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. I want to read... Another passage, and then I'm going to make reference to these passages. So here you have a whole group who are just so full of themselves. They decided they would just continue to build until they get to heaven. And we'll come to find out that when man decides to do something without God's permission, God will come. And straighten them out. So whatever the world may think that they are doing. Whatever even the church might think it's doing. And it's not God's will or his word. Judgment will start in the house of God. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 to 12. Let no one deceive you in any way. For that day will not come. Unless the rebellion comes first. And the lawless one is revealed. The one destined for destruction. He opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God or object of worship. So that he takes his seat in the temple of God, declaring himself to be God. Do you not remember that I told you these things when I was still with you? And you know what is now restraining him so that he may be revealed when his time comes for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work but only until the one who now restrains it is it is removed and then the lawless one will be revealed whom the lord jesus will destroy with the breath of his mouth annihilating him by the manifestation of his coming the coming of the lawless one is apparent in the working of Satan, who uses all power, signs, lying wonders, and every kind of wicked deception for those who are perishing because they refused to love 
the truth and so be saved. For this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion, leading them to believe what is false, so that all who have not believed the truth, but took pleasure in unrighteousness, will be condemned. I just want you all to know that while I'm not going to go through line by line either of these passages, I will let you know what's being preached based on what the context and the content of these passages are. I want you to understand a couple lines here that I need you to underline. So, the one destined for destruction. Satan is destined for destruction. The Antichrist will be destined for destruction. God already knows the end from the beginning. There's no question about if he will be or if he will not be. He will be des destined. And he wants to take as many with him because he's already destined for destruction. The word of God says in verse 10, because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. When you love the truth, you obey the truth. You cannot love the truth in your head because it gives you a good feeling. If you don't obey the truth, you don't love the truth. You are saved when you love the truth. Love the truth and so be saved. Religion says... Pick what you want and run with it to each his own. The word of God says, love the truth, love the truth, love the truth. If we cannot love the truth, Jesus says, if you love me, obey me. A lot of times, because we believe, we think we know what is right. We call right, wrong, and wrong, right. But the truth is... God's word, and we found this out last week, will cause separation between people because the word cuts. And a mother might disagree with a daughter. In fact, the word will cause division between people and it's going to get worse. You're going to find out that with the one world government and the one world religion, this whole thinking that sounds really nice, Let's all be together in love. We saw last week, go back and listen to the message last week. God, Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit never preached unity at the expense of sin. So if to love someone means to agree with them for peace sake, and you're going against God's word. Then you've got to love them. And have a boundary between yourself and them. I'm not preaching on that topic today. But for those of you that have not heard it. You need to understand. There is the thinking postmodernism. Everything else that is part of the foundation being laid. By the one world religion. By the one world government. By, the, by, by those in authority. That, 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 that want us all to embrace this one love. Nobody says you can't love, but you love Jesus first. You love his word first. And if his word causes you to disagree with somebody, you can disagree lovingly. Cut out all this big drama thing. When you have to tell somebody something, you have to make them feel bad. No, just is your position is. You're not changing it. You will not be popular. If I, I will tell you right now, I've said it before. I love people. But the governments of the world are starting now to put pressure on the doctors to do surgery for those children who parents no longer have a say in some countries. Parents are being imprisoned if they say they do not want their child to have surgery to change their sex. They're being imprisoned. And there are pastors that are already starting to be imprisoned because they will not perform same-sex marriages. I'm not here to say I don't love 
the one who wants as a man to live with a man. I can't say I don't love them, but I will not perform a ceremony. So you understand a marriage ceremony. So you understand where my position of what does the word say doesn't stop me from loving. But I love Jesus first, so I will not perform any rite or ceremony because the government says I have to. It's going to get worse. In your own homes, it's going to get worse. You must learn to respond in love, but you must stand. And the reason why we have to be careful and stay in the word is because the word says God will send a powerful delusion. Powerful delusion. Where they will believe what is false. There are those who will tell you this is right, this is fine, this is good. And according to the word it isn't and they will believe that it is, that it is good. Delusion. So I want us to understand that the worst thing is not, let me look out at the sky and see if Jesus is coming. I keep telling you all, he will come when he's ready. Are we ready? Can we stand? So that all who have not believed the truth, belief is not an intellectual word, it's a practical word. If you believe, you will, you will walk in that belief. So you can't fool God. Because Satan knows about Jesus. We know about Jesus. Are we believing the truth? Are we walking it out? The word says all who have not believed the truth. But took pleasure in unrighteousness will be condemned. It's very straightforward. So. I want us to know. That. Globalists. Are now insisting. That national governments should surrender their sovereignty to a one world government. It hasn't come out totally in the open, but there are discussions. I want us to know the same way you look at the prophetic timeline and you can just like there are those who are now looking at the countries that are um, speaking against Israel and they are going back to the Bible study from last week and they say, wow. We learn this, yep, I see in this nation, I see in Turkey, I see in this. So you begin to know like, you're not being taken by surprise, y'all. It's all in the word. You must look at what's going on with governments. You must look at what's going on out there. When you hear of meetings, such a government, this is the plan. Don't take my word for it. You will see it come to pass, but they are talking about it. Remember, you don't have to accept anything that hasn't come to pass. However, there's a language being spoken out there and us Christians can't be naive and dumb to it. Because governments are in power doesn't mean they're hearing from God. It means they're in power. You respect And obey once it does not call you to disobey the word of God. Are you hearing me? You must respect, you must obey. But there are those being imprisoned even now. Because they will not obey the government. And marry to men, marry to women. There are parents being imprisoned because they will not agree to what is being asked for their children. So the children are being removed from the homes. So you obey unless it calls you to disobey God's word. What do you think the underground church is about in China? They are not obeying the government. They are hiding to read the word. And they're being persecuted and killed. So don't for one minute feel because government calls itself government that we are called to blindly obey. But we must at least look at what they're asking. Be respectful. Take up the word. Check out what's starting to happen. 
I want you to understand that many serious voices are calling for world headquarters, a world court, a world military, and the emerging new world order is the overarching development or the umbrella under which all the other issues are being brought. It's a bigger picture. They're trying to make it into the bigger picture. So as we move closer to the end of the age, the new world order will manifest as the Antichrist, one world government and religion. Go and read Revelation 13. So with the growing realization that we're living at the end of the last days, not the end of the world, we're in a season, perhaps in the last hour of the last days. We spoke on that. It's vital to look at these global issues. You must look at the global issues through eschatological lenses. You've got to look at it through the word of God. You've got to look at it through the prophetic timeline. You've got to look at Israel. And you will see everything that God is speaking of. You will see it through what's going on with Israel. You've got to look at global issues through the lens of the word of God that speaks about the end times. So where I read Genesis 11, 1 to 9... We learn of a united human race, one in both language and purpose, determined to build a tower in the plain of China. And the construction of the tower was to serve as a monument to human achievement. Boy, are we full of it today. We actually, I think China is, is trying to create the sun, who not trying to build organs? Who is not trying to create human beings? I mean, man has reached a point where we're full of it with what we are believing that we have reached. And I want you to know it's nothing new. The construction of that tower was to serve as here we reach. And the attitude of the builders, as you examine that scripture, it was indicative of those who had rejected God as their creator. They, they became like God in their minds. And at the end of the day, we read that the scholars identify the basic motivation underlying that entire project as God defying disobedience and pride. And a book written by H. Edward Rowe, New Age Global Globalism. This person wrote, we must not miss the central warning that resounds through the corridors of the long centuries to our time. The tower builders structured a mighty global organization independent of God. They dedicated it to the establishment of a human unity which would secure them against the prospect of being scattered apart throughout the world. The Bible, of course, teaches us that God was very much displeased with such an effort and confounded their language and scattered them abroad. The very thing that they were trying to pre prevent so I want you to know that the descendants of the Babel builders are still with us today. The, 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 the Tower of Babel is still being built. The pride and the wanting to establish unity without God is still very much present. I'm not sure how far we will get today, but the reason why we need to understand what... The, the, the thrust that is going on around us is because we need to understand that while the turmoil is going on with the wars, there is a thrust of we must become united as one in order to save the planet. That's the thinking. Of course, we spoke about the one world religion and the heifers that have already been flown in and the third temple is about to be built. I'm not going back there. But I'm here to tell you, 
You've got to see multiple things happening because it's paving the way for the Antichrist. They're getting he ready. Not making his entrance yet. Maybe he's there among some of those leaders. We don't know. You need to know the direction that the world is going in and you see it taking shape. And as Christians, this century has been described as a century with the most illiterate Christians ever. I have been reading that. It does not come from me because we don't know what the word says. But we cannot say anymore that we have not been brought at least up to date with. Look out and see and you will see the scripture being written across the planets as God he reigns sovereign in the affairs of man. You will say things are happening, it's terrible. God is in control. God knows. Nothing will take us by surprise. However, sin will blind us to the truth. So we got to get back on track. So I want us to know that the descendants of the Babel builders are still with us today. And their plan is to create a global society. In many of their writings, some of which there's a couple of clips I have, but the truth is, for example, and they're stretching you all, eh? because I cannot take information from things that exist and, and write it in simpler language for you. I could try to break it down. These things exist out there. Many of us do not know. There are our governments are aware of it, have approved of it. How many of you know Trinidad and Tobago voted? In the UN, they voted where, they, where Israel was concerned. They voted to what? They asked for a ceasefire. How many of you know that Trinidad and Tobago refused to vote condemning Hamas for the action? How many of you know that? But that's what happened. I'm not here to comment. I'm here to say... God said, bless Israel. God said, if I curse Israel, I will be cursed. Let God work out all the inside info. Nobody making me say nothing. Nobody making me move this flag. I love you, Israel. And all the nations, but I'm blessing Israel. Do you understand? Did I comment on what they did, what they didn't do? But the fact is, just telling you, form your own conclusion, I have nothing to say. How many of you know in the UN, our country withdrew from voting to condemn the initial attack that took place? I'm making the point, there are many things we don't know. I want you all to understand something. There are many things in the world we will not understand until we reach heaven. So this is why I'm telling you, don't get into vain discussions about who is right and who is wrong. Obey God and hush and pray. Pray for Israel, pray for the Palestinians. Pray for the world. Pray. Don't get into no set of talk. Because somebody will make you say something. And you'll open the word and you'll say, wait. I was not supposed to say that. I was not supposed to call down curses on Israel. I was not supposed to go that far. And I open my mouth. Be careful, y'all. Perhaps in the next couple of weeks, I will help you to understand biblically where this whole war started in the scripture, I'm not going into no politics, in the word of God, so you will not be ignorant of the spiritual dimension of it. Okay, at some point, if the Lord will lead me that way. So I want you to know, I want you to know that just as we are accustomed to nationalism, there's a thrust of globalism for the whole world. And... At the end of the day, there are those who write articles who have a say in the running of the world. So, for example, we will see that in March the 6th, 1991, 
and address the Congress, George Bush, commemorating the conclusion of the Persian Gulf War, said, until now, the world we've known has been a world divided, a world of barbed wire and concrete block conflict and Cold War. Now we can see a new world coming into view, a world in which there's a very real prospect of a new world order, a world where the United Nations, freed from the Cold War stalemate, is poised to fulfill the historic vision of its founders. Nevertheless, should we not see the irony in a united mankind? Should we not see the, the, the irony the name collective security. So I want you to know, just as George Bush talked about a new world order, there are many others who are talking about a new world order. But the collective security assembling once again in the very place where mankind was originally scattered abroad by God because of their ungodly and ill-conceived unity platform. You say, well, how is it ungodly? Because when you listen to these people and their plans, it is devoid of God. It is devoid of anything to do with God. It is to do with what they can do if the world comes together as one what they can achieve, okay? I cannot express it to you in one session, but I'm saying to you, and I want you to understand that globalism and one worldism is a man-made delusion. The Apostle Paul taught a oneness of mankind that could only be recognized by those who understand Jesus Christ as their creator. Acts 17, 22 to 31, you can go and read. I want you to understand that according to the word of God, the solution to mankind's problem is of divine and not man-made origin. So what you're going to find is the one worldism, the one world unity, the one world order is contrary to the word of God. When you begin to listen to them and how their plan is to have this one world, you will understand God, the true God, the true and living God, the word of God, the word of God that we read, the word of, listen to me, you cannot have several truths, then it's not truth. Computers are made one particular way. Cars are driven one particular way. Yes, it might have a gear shift. Probably no longer you have automatic. You cannot have several truths. You cannot have several truths. He's either the true and living God or he's not. So when they want to create a one world government and a one world religion where everybody must get along, nobody's saying not to get along, but I can't get... I, you're, you, you're not going to accept me if I say to you, and I'm not here to, to, to say that this is happening to you, I'm just using you as an example. If you come to my house and you bring your boyfriend with you, she doesn't have a boyfriend by the way, <laughs> and she says to me, I'd like to stay in your house, can he sleep with me in the room? And I say, no you can't, not in this house, as a matter of fact, I don't want you with him in here past six o'clock or past eight o'clock. If you don't understand that I'm obeying what the word says from the true and living God, you're going to be upset with me. Anybody agrees? Is she, is she yeah. So how are we going to get along all the time? I love you, but we're not going to get along because every time you come in my home, and you want to bring him with you, and I tell you he has to go, or perhaps maybe there's something you think is okay to listen to in my home, and I say to you, I love you, but this not going down today, you're not going to be happy with me. I'll hug you and tell you I love you, but we'll have to agree to disagree. How can there be a world where we're going to agree if everybody doesn't agree that Jesus Christ is the true and living God. You can love each other and disagree. And there's going to come a point in time, nobody's talking about embarrassing anybody. But at the end of the day, even those who are not ready to get married, who are 
male and female, come to us and we say, I'm sorry, we're not marrying you. And they look at us like this. And we say, well, it's our right. We have to witness to God that we are, we are agreeing as part of a covenant. We are witness. God will judge us. You need more help. There's some more work. It's your right to go somewhere else. But you're not going to be happy with me. And we are both Christians. Do you understand what I'm saying? So please, on a basic level, with very little time for me to preach this message this morning, I'm saying to you, the oneness and the unity assumes we are agreeing on the word of God. Do you understand? So, we have shared with you many of the ideas that those at the top, the globalists, the elites, the Freemasons, the Illuminati, that I didn't reach to to explain, have had a say in the running of this world that some of you don't know about, but there's a lot of proof that I can share with you that a lot of the decisions that are made, they're not necessarily made by Christians. We live in the world, but we're not of the world. Do you understand? But it's getting to the point where they have come out of their hiding places and they're not hiding anymore. So the things that they want to do with the world, it's going to affect us. And you're going to find yourself having to make decisions with what they're going to start to ask you to do on your job. Perhaps it has not happened as yet. But it will. You've got to know what the word says. And you've got to love people, but love Jesus more. So, I want you to know that... Don't get confused here. Those carrying the Luciferian agenda will initially prevail. They will. Please don't feel God is failing. He's not. We already know where it's going. Through their wealth, through their power, both worldly and demonic, their strategies will succeed. Their task is to work tirelessly day and night to persuade and prepare an unsuspecting world to begin to take part in what they are offering, preparing the way for the Antichrist, for when he offers what he's going to offer. And I think I asked you last week, I said, if you can't get food, because you can't, because you must take a mark, whatever that is, as you can't feed your family. What are you going to do? I don't know exactly when the rapture is. We hope God will take us out before, but we really don't know for sure. What are you going to do? What are you going to do if you can't get the meds that you need for your disease? Because you, you have to. Agree. Since it's not going to happen overnight, it's going to be little by little by little by little. Sensitize you. Brainwash you. Well, the government wants this and the government wants that. Go ahead and do it. Because why? Because as Christians, you have forgotten what you agree to once it's not contrary to the word of God. You're not obligated to obey if it's contrary to the word of God. So it will get to that place where it will be things that you cannot agree to. You've got to get stronger spiritually to stand. And so I want us to understand that at the end of the day, life will be controlled by a supreme central power operating out of a world capital city and what's going to happen is that many of the nations who were all separate, World Health Organization, since the COVID, 
they have asked countries to sign, our country signed. I'm not here to tell you yay nor nay. I'm here to tell you they signed the next pandemic. The WHO has the say as to how things are to be handled because they were not happy with how some countries responded to the pandemic. My voice is not going high because I'm in shock. I'm just a little hoarse. So since that's already in place, so I'm saying to you, I'm not here to tell you to be upset with our government. I'm just telling you that WH World Health Organization has the final say. Do you understand? So I, I want us to understand as we go down this journey, because I have not even gotten halfway to talk about the one world government. I, because my aim is not, I can't tell you exactly what it will look like, but I can tell you what has already taken place so that you understand globalism is what they are about. And it comes under the pretext that is going to help us to agree with each other more. It's going to help us to be more tolerant of each other's differences. It sounds nice. Of course, my sister, I will be tolerant of the difference between you and me. But he not sleeping in my house. Do you understand? So there's going to be lines drawn. And if I'm forced by a government to say, uh, because this is true, I just don't have time to show you the clip today. I'm telling you, parents have had to go into prison in some of these other countries because they refuse to agree to what the government has ruled. If your child wants to go through changing their sex, you have no right to tell them no. It's already happening. So I'm letting you know that some of us go get locked up. Some of us will get locked up. I don't know about you, but I know there are pastors under pressure in other countries because they are refusing to obey the government and not differentiate between male and female. And, and I need you to know, I know the media is controlled, but there are some things we can't just say we're not looking at the media, okay? So I want you to just take note of this little, this little clip here. Hundreds of gas-guzzling private jets took off this week as billionaires from all over the world jetted off to Davos, Switzerland for the ritzy and glamorous World Economic Forum. And it's all headed up by a guy named Klaus Schwab, who's pretty much running a one-world government here. He kicked off the week by saying the future is theirs, not yours. The future is not just happening. The future is built by us, by a powerful community as you here in this room. We have the means to improve the states of the world. And the way they start is by tracking you. We're developing through technology an ability for consumers to measure their own carbon footprint. What does that mean? That's where are they traveling? How are they traveling? What are they eating? What are they consuming on the platform? So individual carbon footprint tracker. People forget greenhouse gases are pollution. And 15 million people a year die because of the quality of the air around the world. We're, 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 we're dealing with a crisis here, folks. That's a crisis made by human beings. Maybe they should take their own advice before jetting off across the world on those private jets. But to them, they have more important things to focus on like preventing the next pandemic. If it comes 10 years from now, we should have far, far better diagnostic technology. That is, be able to scale up every country within a month uh, to diagnose their entire population. We're a little distracted right now, so getting the debate going uh, is happening slowly. Yeah, a lot of people are distracted by inflation, food shortages, you know, real problems. But the ruling class at Davos says, don't worry, it's all a part of the plan. We need to accept that there will be some pain in the process. Uh, the pace that we need will 
uh, will open up for missteps. Mm. Uh, it will open up for uh, shortages on energy. It will create inflationary pressures. And maybe we need to start talking about that, that that pain is actually worth it. If you have all the money in the world, the last thing you have to worry about is inflation. Believe it when I tell you, these people don't care about any of us. Rand Paul, Kentucky senator, and he joins me now. Should the American people be scared? The real danger is this. Look how bad your government is in a country where you get to vote for these people. This would be a government, a world government, where you don't get to vote on anybody. This is everybody's worst nightmare. Can you imagine the one world bureaucracy of all these elitists and their private jets that would rule our, our country and we wouldn't get to vote? So they used to call people who talked about one world government, they used to say, oh, it's a conspiracy. And we would always say, no, it's in their mission statement. They say <laughs> it at every meeting. That's what they're for. But uh, lock, lack of sovereignty means lack of freedom. And I don't want to put down Bill Gates, but when you hear him kind of just dismiss inflation or, you know, oh, you know you're going to have to go through some pain in order to kind of go with my idea. Inflation cause, is caused by an increase in the money supply that increases the demand. It's done because we spend too much money. The Federal Reserve prints it up to borrow it. It floods the economy and drives prices up. If you don't understand that, they'll never get it any better. And my prediction is it's going to get a lot worse before November. What do you think about this tr tracking technology? Yeah, privacy is not much of a concern for these kind of people. So not only do they want to track you for your carbon footprint, the WHO has announced, you know, they're forming a treaty, and it's going to be this treaty for the next pandemic. But in the next pandemic, it's not going to be a, a, a Washington-based mandate on vaccines or a Washington-based social distancing or masks. It's going to be an international one, and they actually want to track everybody with a QRS code. I think that goes beneath the surface right back <laughs> here, but I'm not sure how they get it in you but uh, no I mean it's no laughing matter it is very worrisome but whenever they talk about it they have absolutely no concern for privacy and you're exactly right they don't care about the individual they don't know people like us they've never been on a bus they've never been on Southwest Airlines they've never driven a car most of them have never even driven their own car so these are not the kind of people we want telling the rest of us what to do all right Senator Rand Paul from Kentucky since I just want to say to you in light of the fact that I will have to continue, you need to understand that when we read about the Tower of Babel and we read about it and we separate it from our lives, we realize actually it cannot be separated because you begin to see certain things that science is starting to talk about that they are doing. And you ask yourself about the, the ethics behind. We're not against science, but it's almost as if there's no God. That they can create life. They talk about, they, 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 they're going to create organs. There's not going to be any more donors of organs. You say, well, that is wonderful. But you need to understand that the thinking behind it does not include God. It's as if we are God. God has always had different nations. And any time you have a call for nations to come together and you notice who is behind and you look at the faces of who is behind global governance and you begin to check out who these people are. You see, we are very gullible. Well, they're high up, so therefore we must obey them. The Christians have got to start to read their word and test what is being said. It has nothing to do with because they are elite, because they are globalists, because they are rich. I have nothing against anybody except what they are beginning to say and the direction in which decisions are made to direct the world. You you're going to find yourself in the minority because we are considered to be the ones who are haters. We don't get along because once you take your position of the word of God says and you're not going against it, you're going to find yourself butting heads with some of these decisions. I want you to understand that the Freemasons claim 
They've had a direct line of descent from way, 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 way back. Many of us are very much not in the now, not in the know about how freely these people speak about they rule the world because they actually do. They actually, many of the secret societies, the Illuminati, all of these, this is not conspiracy theory. The Bible is telling you about the way the world is going to go and you simply need to know, you don't have to accept it, that there are those who have formed their network and many of us are going to be caught unawares. I'm sure, as I told you, you didn't know that the government of Trinidad and Tobago voted on behalf of you not to condemn Hamas. I'm not here to tell you whether, whether you should agree or not agree. I'm letting you know my position is if someone attacks a country, they ought to be condemned for attacking a country. Do you understand? Whatever the other reasons, they should be condemned for attacking. Just as there should be a call for ceasefire. Do you understand? It, it kind of, it's, it's a little strange to me. So if you ask me my opinion, I will tell you, but I'm not telling you what to say. Our government has already voted. My point is, you are going to find that the governments of the world are going to start to come together in different ways and you need to be alert to what you are agreeing to. But most times, it's going to be taken out of your hands. Just like the curriculum for children and what they are being taught. You did not vote on it. I saw it with my own eyes as I traveled and my daughter-in-law showed me. She's horrified and I know it has made its way here. Did you vote on it? No. So you're going to have to start to speak out. Do you understand what I'm saying? So when you read about the Tower of Babel, please don't separate it. Don't get yourself, do you hear me having a discussion? I'm not discussing with nobody what the voting was on behalf of Trinidad. I'm just letting you know. I, Jesus, I repent for my nation and my country for not condemning Hamas for that invasion. I agree there should be a ceasefire. This is me. Do you understand? But I'm not going to discuss it. I am not dumb. I am not going through life because the government said it. I'm just going to agree. I'm going to go and check the word of God. They came against God's people, Israel, so they should be condemned for it and said you did wrong. You did wrong. That's what I mean by condemn. You did wrong. You are dead wrong. Do you understand? It's going to get more and more where these decisions will be made and you have to decide what are you going to agree to because you are going to wake up one day in a country where your rights as a Christian would have been taken away before your very eyes are you understanding me I haven't even reached the repercussions of the one world. But the one world government is going to happen because it's in the Bible. I haven't quite gotten there. It's paving the way for the Antichrist. I am hoping that by talking here today, we will begin to become more filled with God's word. With a backbone. Because if we can't say, I don't agree from now, your ego say it. When other laws are passed, are you understanding? Since somebody understanding what I'm saying, you don't become eating meat just so. You have to gradually be introduced. We are in a season where everything is not going to go our way. What are we going to respond? What are we going to say? What are we going to say on the workplace when they come and they want us to do something that we don't agree with? Many of us don't want to hear these things, but saints, we would not be good pastors if we don't sensitize you to what is happening. So I'm going to close now because I respect the time that God has given me. And you all have to be with your families. And I want to say as I close that the real tragedy in all of this talk of global unity 
is the absence of any emphasis on the spiritual roots of democracy and freedom. And what has happened in Europe, for example, the gospel has been so blunted that there's little God consciousness. Without Christ, the Prince of Peace, there can be no hope for man-made orders of peace and prosperity. And that's what the One World Government is about. Man-made orders for peace and prosperity. So I want us to know as we close, where are we right now? We've got to make decisions. We are in the world, we are not of the world. Continue as you continue to learn, because I've not finished. We've not even gotten to the Antichrist, the character sketch that's in the Bible. I'm quoting scripture to you when I come back to talk about what does he look like? What is he going to be like? God tells us in his word. I just want you to become more aware of some of the things that are being said concerning the direction of the world, the direction of the country you live in. Usually, a grace has a cold and we catch it after. So there's a lot of things we don't know that's happening. Like nobody knows, there's a global famine. We know because all the flour and rice that we are accustomed getting, we're not getting. They're telling us they're not getting it. Food for the poor is telling us they're not getting it anymore. We know there's a famine. Has it been in the papers? Has, it, has the news talked about it? No. So can we please become people of the word? God sent his son to die for us. God did not send any president, prime minister, leader of any country, but we respect them. But it is Jesus to die for we. And so therefore, it is to him that we turn as we seek his face daily, as we read his word daily, and as we read the news. Some of it might be true, some is not true, but there are some things that are right in front of us, aside from the war that's going on. Begin to look at the trend. Begin to pray while there's time. But most of all, pray that as we occupy till he comes, we will stand holy and faithful to the word of Jesus Christ. God bless you.